How's it going guys? Glad you could join me today. We're going to be running some errands. I'm going to share one of my favorite recipes with you and then I'm finally going to reveal the exercise class that I've been talking about doing. So let's go. We're going to start by getting this guy some dog food. For anyone who was interested or noticed, um, I don't feed my dog a vegan diet um, because, well, he's not a vegan. <laughs> I mean, it's, I know some people do, but when it comes to what I think is healthiest for my dog, I don't think a vegan diet is necessarily healthy. Now, as you know, you may have read or heard about with pets, that dogs are capable of eating a vegan diet, while cats are not. The cats are, you know, naturally, carnivores and dogs are more omnivores but you know there are a lot of things that my dog is capable of eating that aren't necessarily the best for him I mean it's constant you know speculated that the one of the early uses of dogs was pretty much a garbage disposal and, and so he is very capable of eating a vegan diet but I don't think that's what's best for him so I just buy regular dog food for him and I think that for myself that the vegan diet is what's best for me so it's not something that I try to impress upon my dog in any way because it's not a political or social or any kind of other thing other simply other status other than just taking care of my personal health so just thought I'd put that one in there for you guys just to let you know just in case that question came up or you had thoughts about that so there you go sit stay Stay. 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 Get it. Get it. Go get it. Hi guys, tonight we're going to be having a sweet potato enchilada casserole. And I, it's a, like I told you earlier, it's a recipe that I kind of worked, put together myself. Um, I started in the China Study Cookbook, and if you're just starting out looking for whole food plant-based recipes or vegan recipes, I highly, highly recommend this. It's all very good, simple, easy to do recipes. I started with their fabulous sweet potato enchiladas, and I kind of went off from there just to simplify some things. So, um, first thing you have to do, even though it's in like, so it's like the second to last ingredients, is cooked sweet potatoes. So the first thing you need to do is cook sweet potatoes. So I use my little handy potato express bag. You can get these at Walmart. I've seen them at Walgreens, CVS, all sorts of places. They are fantastic. You simply take your potatoes, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, red, russet, whatever kind of potatoes you have. Kind of rinse them, give them a scrub, and just leave them wet, put them in the bag, and then um, they've got some times listed on here. I find those to be a little, not quite enough, but I find that the potato setting on the microwave, kind of, it really depends on how big the potato is and also the other factors. So just pay attention to them, you don't want to overcook them. So I'm going to get those potatoes ready, put them in the bag, stick them in the microwave. Oh, and ignore the fact that my kitchen's a mess. I'm human, I'm normal, this is what my house looks like, it's what your house is going to look like, it's fine. And then there's screaming babies and a dog, and this is life, you know. And so, this isn't a cooking channel, this is a lifestyle channel. All right. So it calls for three cups, and I find that these medium sweet potatoes kind of, it's about a cup a piece, not quite, but I think this is going to be enough, and we're going to make it work. Just rinse them and kind of just give them a little scrub, pull off any stems or anything. All right, for those two potatoes, I'm going to start with six minutes on my microwave. We'll see what happens. Okay, so. While that's finishing up, I'm going to go ahead and get started on everything else. I'm going to hit, 
turn the oven on, set it to 350. If you ever want to tell if it's a whole food plant-based recipe, a great way to tell is if the first step is to saute onions, garlic, and usually green pepper, it's probably a whole food plant-based recipe. So, got some vegetable broth in there, and I'm going to throw in its one medium onion, diced. And then five cloves of garlic. I'm going to be honest, I have never known how much one clove of garlic minced is out of the jar. So I kind of do it like that. Could be more, could be less. But it's never made a dish inedible. So, and to get that started, and it says saute until the onion is translucent, and then we're gonna add some spices to it. Okay, and one difference, if you're picking up this whole food plant base, especially the no oil part of cooking, um, one thing you need to really be careful of is not burning your vegetables. So um, with oil, the oil can you know, reach a higher temperature, it doesn't really evaporate, and so you're able to cook vegetables and things faster. But with the um, using vegetable broth, you know, it will boil and evaporate, so you really have to stay on top of it. You want to find the temperature on your stove that puts it really just right at that boiling point. You can see it kind of bubbling up over here. And really just the key is to keep stirring. Because if you let it sit too long and it, hit, it can hit a dry spot and burn, that was one of the first things you learn cooking, you know, practicing cooking whole food plant-based, is to not burn the dishes on that first, on this first step. You can start at a medium heat and just work your way up. I'm at about almost a high right now. It's cooking it pretty fast. You can see it's starting to evaporate, it's getting dry, and now I'm starting to leave some, you know, it's really starting to stick a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that heat down. Alright, so I've got that onion translucent. I'm going to very quickly, take out the heat for just a second, I'm going to be adding two teaspoons cumin, and you saw I finally got that coriander. Oh, and as you notice, it's kind of, you know, I waited too long, it's all starting to dry up, things are starting to stick. Best thing is, you just add just a splash of vegetable broth. Always keep that handy. One teaspoon of coriander. So I add the two teaspoons of cumin, one of coriander, and again, if the things start to stick, you just throw a splash in there. Just unstick it and everything's fine. All right, and then we're going to stir this all in. We're really just trying to coat this onion and garlic mixture with the coriander and cumin. And just be sure to keep it from sticking finding those dry spots. And now we're gonna add everything else that's gonna go in this. So, we've got a can of black beans, rinsed and drained. Oops, throw some on the counter there for good measure. Now the directions in the cookbook call for fresh spinach, but because I'm doing the recipe a little differently, I'm going to be using frozen spinach, so that's one difference. So two cups of frozen spinach, the black beans, a um, little more vegetable broth because I do need to be getting into this spinach, four tablespoons of soy sauce. All right, so get that in there. And then my little trick for doing the mashed potatoes. They have, again, I've got them cooked. They have cooled down a little bit. They will still be warm. But what I like to do I just take them and, and skin them ever so, just cut them so that the skin starts to peel open like that. And these will be hot, so once you open them up. So what I like to do, sit here and peel the skin off of them. Just kind of pinch it and if they're cooked, it will just peel right off. And you can just pinch that potato right out of the skin, just like that. That's one. All right, so now I've got my three sweet potatoes in there, and I'm just going to mash them in the pan. And so we got our black beans, sweet potatoes, spinach, onions, garlic, cumin, coriander, and soy sauce. And turn that heat off. Okay, we're going to grab a casserole dish and try to slide this off the heat. Now, this is where I do things a little differently. Um, in the China Study Cookbook, or if you want to do it this way, you just grab your tortillas, stuff them, you know, stuff them with our... Um, mixture here, top them with salsa, and you're good to go. But I like to do things a little differently to make it a little bit more of a full meal. So, here's what I do. So first we're gonna take a can of refried beans. 
I prefer to get the fat-free refried beans because they don't have any oil or anything. Um, all they had available though was either regular, which has lard in it, so no bueno, or vegetarian, which has soybean oil in it. So this is not a completely oil-free, sodium-free recipe, as you're about to see. But take that can of refried beans. We're just going to spread it out here in the bottom of the pan. And then secondly, we're going to take a can of enchilada sauce. And this definitely is where we kind of fall short of the low sodium because this, these kind of sauces do have a lot of salt in them. So we're just going to spread a thin layer of enchilada sauce across that. And then I'm going to take our tortillas and instead of rolling everything up, we're just going to lay them flat. Because that was the problem I was having with these corn tortillas and trying to roll up enchiladas. They were, the tortillas were splitting and all that stuff. So I figured I'll just lay them flat. And then we take um, some scoops of our enchilada, of our sweet potato mixture. Spread it out in a nice layer there. And then I'm going to put in another layer of this enchilada sauce. And then another layer of tortillas. And so on and so forth until I'm out of stuffing. Which looks like I'm going to put it all here on this next level. Looks like I had just enough. And then whatever I have left here in this can, here we are. If you've got like a cashew cheese or a queso kind of recipe that you want to do, feel free to spread that on top. We're just going to top it with aluminum foil. And like I said, the oven is at 350 and we're going to set this in there for about 20 minutes. And we'll see you when it's done. All right, that timer is done. One-handed, look at that. That oven is hot. I call this dish the enchi lasagna, a cross between a lasagna and an enchilada casserole. So, there we have it for today. Um, I'm gonna eat this dinner. It's gonna be delicious. All right, guys, for those of you that have been wondering what I've been doing every once a week, um, I have been taking a parkour class. If you saw some clips, you saw me doing a few things, but I thought I'd give you a quick little tour of the gym. I'm actually up on the high point, so I can show you behind me. Got the bar work behind us. Behind that wall, there's a foam pit for flips and things. And over here, we've got a tumbling strip and you know, vaults, all sorts of stuff. Got more vault areas here. Give you a shot. We got another climbing wall up here. So that's what I've been doing. It's been really great. It's been good for me to get back. It's not as high. I mean, it is high impact, but in the end, it doesn't kill my knees because I can take breaks, slow down from it and work my whole body. So I am really enjoying this. It's kind of a flashback for me because I was a gymnast a long time ago. So anyways, that's what I've been doing. As you can tell, I've just finished working out. It's a good workout. So I just encourage everyone to find something that really sparks your interest, that you can do something consistent, either by yourself, with a group of people, whatever it is that helps keep you motivated to keep working. Uh, tomorrow we're supposed to have about a foot of snow. So I'm definitely not going anywhere, but I might get some cool shots of some stuff. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll see you later.